In this video, we're going to go through the diagnostics on how to fix a microwave oven. I don't recommend doing this because there's a lot of componentry in here that can not only hurt you, but could kill you. If the capacitor is not discharged, there's enough energy that it could kill you. This is a very high voltage transformer that could also kill you. We have a microwave that turns on but doesn't heat. Put some water on and start it up. Light turns on, the table moves, but no heat. It's also making a very loud noise. Some of the LCD screen is not working. When we open it up, we'll check the water, and absolutely no heat at all on the water. From the back, I can see the fan runs and the light turns on. They have security screws on here, so you can't get in there unless you have one of these special bits. We'll remove the screws. With the screws out, we can remove the top. Push the top straight back. Lift off the top. We'll check the fuses. This one looks good. Check for any popped capacitors. There's a real big capacitor right down there, and that could really hurt you. You want to stay away from that if you don't understand capacitors. We're going to check it for voltage. There's no voltage, but we're going to discharge it anyway. We'll pull off the lug, then we'll pull off the other lug. With a jumper wire, we'll go ahead and short those out. The best way would be to have a resistor. If there was actually energy in here, it would have snapped this wire. Now we know we have the capacitor discharged. We're going to test the high voltage diode here. With a voltmeter on ohms, we're going to check the diode in both directions. When we check both sides, there should be high ohms on one side and low ohms on the other side. To give you an example, here's a good diode. On one side, there's high resistance, and when we flip it over, you can see that there's low resistance on the other side. Diodes like this are a real common problem on these microwaves. With the screw loose, we can pull out the capacitor. Now we can disconnect it. These are pretty common diodes. You can pick them up online for about five bucks a piece. This diode is too big to be able to test on a voltmeter, so we've added a resistor and put voltage across it, and we find that it is responding the way it should. When we test the diodes in that method, they're both good. Here's a microwave stuck here in the snow, about the same size. Even though the capacitor's been in there for a long time, it's still just as dangerous as it could be. Next, we're gonna test a capacitor. We'll go with ohms. When we put it on there, it'll go from low to high if it's good, and this looks like it's good. Next, we'll check from the terminal to the case, and it should be OL, and it's good. OL says no connection. We'll test the door switches next. We'll put the meter into continuity mode. We have continuity on the switch. We'll open up the door. And it turns off. That We've one's got good. continuity on the second switch. We'll open the door. Huh. When we pull everything apart, it was pulling continuity from another source in the circuit. With the one wire off, now when we open the door, we have continuity. So that switch was doing its job. Last switch, we've got continuity. We'll open the door, and that works. This switching system will show pre-open and open of the door. Next, we have the transformer, and up here we have the magnetron. We'll test the transformer. We'll put 110 volts onto the transformer and then check the voltage output. I've got the capacitor disconnected and we're gonna test the plug that goes to the magnetron. When we plug this in, it should read 3.3 volts and it does. The transformer looks good. We have two thermal fuses that we'll check. Pull off one end and that one's good. And the second one is good. And this right here is a lamp, which is not going to make or break anything. If your light was burned out, this is how you would replace the bulb. On the circuit board, there's a couple relays, so we'll check those. We'll remove the circuit board. With the board out, we'll check the relays. We'll check the coils on the relay, and there should be low ohms. In order to get this reading, there's a coating on the circuit board that you've got to scrape off. Now when we check it, you can see that small resistance. So this relay is in good shape. So the coil on this relay is in good shape, but we'll still want to put 12 volts on it and see if it clicks. We need to know the polarity of the relay. If you apply 12 volts in the wrong direction, you could blow out this flyback diode and you might be able to blow out some other circuitry. We need to know the flow of the electricity through the diode. The power is running from red 
to black. Now we can apply the 12 volts to the relay to see if it clicks. And we can clearly hear that it's clicking. Here's the next relay, and you can clearly hear that one clicking. And here's the third relay, and this one's clicking as well, so they're all good. All the components have tested out okay, so I went ahead and started replacing the parts just to verify that I didn't miss anything. I put in a different transformer that I knew was working, swapped out the capacitors to one that I knew was working, put in a different power diode that I know is working, checked all the relays, and I know those are working. Even though I've checked the magnetron, the only piece that I haven't changed is the magnetron. To me, everything points to the magnetron. It's like 80 bucks to replace that, so that's not worth the price of the oven.